your name? Erica. Erica, okay. So, I want you to give me your lineup, and I'm going to ask you a couple times, like, why? Why that kind of dog, or this and that, okay? So, so okay. Our lineup, Erica, our let's lineup, hear it. Our lineup would be five defenders. Five defenders, five okay. Five defenders, three midfielders, and two forwards. Okay. For a goalie, we would do a pit bull. A pit bull and the goal. Why a pit bull? Pit bulls are usually bigger. Okay. Then German Shepherds at defenders because they usually um, like uh, on the outsides or in the middle or all five. All five. All five German Shepherds. German Shepherds. Nice. Why? Why? Why German Shepherds and why all five? So German Shepherds are usually fast and sometimes they can be really aggressive okay. to get stuff. I like that you said sometimes they can be really aggressive because sometimes as a defender we need to be cool, right, and contain and calm things down. But sometimes we need to be super aggressive, right? I like that. All right, what about your midfielders? Labrador. All three? All three. All right, so why labs in the midfield? Labradors, um, they can be fast. Okay. They can be pretty fast. Sometimes they stay, like they don't want to. But Labradors usually can run for a longer time than okay. the dogs. Okay, they have good endurance. And mid why do midfielders need that? Because they have to run up and down the field. Brilliant. To help forwards and defenders. Okay. Chihuahuas for forwards. You have two forwards and they're both forwards. chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. Okay. Chihuahuas are usually aggressive and they're really fast since they're smaller. Okay. So they can go and attack. They're tiny and agile and fast and aggressive and love it. Brilliant. Thank Erica, you. thank you so much. You guys want to give her a round of applause? <laughs> All right. All right, girls. You're going, you're speaking? Oh boy, here we go. All right. Come on, kiddo. Hop right up here. Yo, you got to come up here. All right, right on that corner seat, right by the microphone. All right, you guys ready to listen? Oh, you're good. Yeah, you don't have to see this. That'll be too loud. You're making a, that isn't going to make a strange noise in the microphone. <laughs> Just have a seat. Have a seat. Hello. Yeah, you don't. There we go. Have a seat right there, okay? All right, so say your name so everyone knows who you are. Isla. Okay, Isla, you guys ready? Yes. All right, who do you have in goal? Clifford. Clifford. Because he's the so big, big it'll, the ball dog. will just bounce off of him yeah. and it'll be like the noise. He can't catch? He can't catch the ball? You said it'll bounce off of him. Well, I he, want him to distribute just, properly. He, cover, he covers the whole goal, so even if he distributes it, it still ends up hitting him. Okay, okay, okay. So he's a good shot stopper. Mm -hmm. All right, good. All right, so who else? What about, tell me a couple of your defenders and why. Um, hey, you guys listen. Go ahead. A Rottweiler. Rottweiler, okay. Yeah. Why? Because sometimes they can be aggressive and sometimes they stay. Good. So they make the right shield. choice at the right time. Yes. And they can shield the ball? Yeah. Amazing. Okay, what else? Um, a golden retriever because they have good stamina. Okay. For. And they retrieve things, right? And we yeah. want to get the ball back. Okay, what else? Um, a lab. Where? In the back? Still mid, still defenders? Mid. Oh, in the midfield. Why a lab in the midfield? Uh, because they as well have really good stamina. Okay. And they can find their way through things. Oh, interesting. All right, so they have good vision of the field. All right, good. What else? You have forwards for me? Yeah. So a Great Dane. Okay, why a Great Dane? Because they're fast and they're good at shielding the they're ball. They're good at shielding as well? Yeah. Okay, and they're tall, right? Yeah. Yeah, like a tall for One of the groups we had in the earlier group had a wiener dog up top. So Great Dane against that would be an interesting, interesting battle. Did you have any other players that stood out? Any exciting reason why you chose certain players? Um, for both sides, I picked Golden Retriever okay. uh, in left and right. Okay. Because Golden Retrievers on the left and right. Why? Because they have just so, they have good stamina. They know what to do. Your team is very fit. You guys do a lot of running. You do a lot of conditioning with your team? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you put, have them show up to practice. They just put their running shoes on and run? As well as my dog sort of knows how to play soccer. Your dog sort of knows how to play soccer? Yeah. Is your dog in the lineup? Well, you she gotta be can, careful because if you it. choose your dog and she only sort of knows how to play, she can hit gonna, it into the goal. She, she can, can score. she okay. can stop the ball if you pass it to her. Oh, she, she can, can. She has good control and she can score. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, sounds like we need her. 
Yeah. Let's do it. You guys got to teach your dogs how to play. All right. Let's, let's do a real life version of this. Thanks, Alex. All right, boys. Oh, boy. Here we go. This better be good. All right. Come on, dog. Come on up. Oh, man. This better be good. All right. What's your name? Say it in the mic, okay? Uh, Leo. Leo. All right, Leo. It's boys against girls today. Wait, what? This better be good. So our goalie is a German Shepherd because... You have a German Shepherd and goal. Because they're very big and fast okay. dogs. Okay. And let's make sure we're listening to them, okay? And then, so we have a 3-4-3 three, three lineup. Okay. And then our defenders are all Huskies. Because, all Huskies. Yes, because they're this big and strong dogs. Big and strong. What else do Huskies do that defenders need to do? They are... They usually stay where they are supposed uh, to when they... They're pass. disciplined. Mm -hmm. What about this? Anyone know attributes of Huskies that make them good defenders? Anyone have a Husky? My grandma had a lucky guy. Oh, no. He probably wouldn't be the best defender right now. But, like, when he was alive, he might have been. Yeah. Okay. Like in Siberia? No. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with how, why Huskies are good defenders, but... but in the winter, yeah. my papa takes his Husky be, uh, because the Huskies have really good smell and stuff. Yeah. So he hunts like deer and stuff. All right. So he takes his Husky to like know where... Okay. Like, what else? Someone else raised their hand about a Husky. What, are, what, are, what do Huskies do that I need defenders to do? They run. The Huskies... Talk a lot. Huskies are very loud. They communicate. They howl. Yep. All right, that was a great. I love it. I have two Huskies at home, so I got I got two thirds of your and lineup. And then there. all of our midfielders are poodles because they're fast and very obedient. Oh, all right. So he's got all the midfielders. You got a three, four, three. Yeah, all four three. midfielders are obedient, fast poodles. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, what do you have up top? And then, as our middle striker, we have a Chihuahua. Because okay. they're very small and fast. Okay. Dogs. And then on each side, we have corgis because they're a medium sized dog and they are very fast and can be kind of loud. Okay. So fast, medium sized, loud corgis. Mm -hmm. Love it. All right. Yeah, you guys, we had a lot of like smaller dogs up top. Thank you very much. Good job, Leo. All right, guys, could I get a round of applause for everybody? All right, so that's mine. That's my lineup right there. So, yeah. So, but hey, and this is what I, it's funny because you were asking me questions like, what is it supposed to be? And it's not supposed to be. The whole purpose of this activity is that you guys can see that we all choose different lineups. Okay. I did put Clifford in the goal, and I always like to do that because he's huge and it covers the entire goal. Yeah, but that's a perspective issue right there. He's covered a lot more of the goal, okay? But I always put herding dogs on the outside so they can force things and, and force play the way they want to go. A retrieving dog, a loud communicative dog, a couple very aggressive ball winners, a good captain. These are often police dogs. And then you got a lot of pace out on the outsides and a big, I like an old school number nine, big, tall, strong forward up top. Okay, so, but the thing is, is all of us made different lineups, okay, and all of us chose different reasons for putting, what was this, we had a court, we had a chihuahua up top, did anyone have a big dog up top, I forget, what did you guys have? Yeah, so that's different types, right, coaches are going to choose different types of players, players with different attributes and different, you might say, oh, this is the lineup I would have chose, and someone else will choose a different lineup, so I want you guys to understand, a good soccer team has a lot of differences, sometimes, I have people do this with zoo animals. Sometimes I ask them to consider certain emotions and, and attributes that people would have, okay? So, Clifford and move on, okay? So, I don't want you guys to try to write everything. And this, remember the topic here. This is about being, becoming a good leader, okay? So, 
You don't need to write every word, okay? But if you kind of get a sense of what's going on on the slide, then we can talk about it, okay? This is Didier Deschamps. He was a French player that also ended up coaching in France. And when he was a player, he would say that you can't only have architects, people that design the buildings. You need to have people that build the buildings. You need bricklayers, okay? And one of his old, like another French player, named Eric Canton, I once said about him, he said the best thing, he didn't, he didn't think Didier Deschamps was a great player. He said the best thing you could say about him is that he carries the water, okay? And he meant that as kind of a put down, but it wasn't to Didier Deschamps. Didier said, I don't mind being that. That's something that our team needs done and I'm going to help our team, okay? He's proud to do that kind of work for his team. I have seen photographs of top players in the world. If anyone, like Mia Hamm, maybe the most famous women's soccer player in the United States, okay? There are photographs of her carrying water to practices. The Japanese team trained here in 2003, trained at Otterbein for about a week during the Women's World Cup that year, and they had a player named Omari Sawa, and she was the World Player of the Year years later, but at this time she was a pretty young player. And I watched her walk up to practice carrying the water for the team, okay? It's important, these are things that need to be done. All our stuff needs to be put away after practice. We need help setting things up. Sometimes your coaches coach two teams or they have to cover it for another coach and they're moving back and forth between fields or they're setting different activities up. We all need help, okay? Sometimes you're gonna have to get creative in how you warm up and I want you guys to be able to share ideas with each other and I need some leaders, I need some followers, I need some architects, I need some bricklayers, okay? So, Carla Overbeck. She uh, played with the women's team, and when they won that very famous 1999 World Cup, she was a captain on that team. I think that's Carla right there, okay? So she built credit in her team. So what she would do is they would show up at a hotel, and she would help other people carry their bags up to their rooms, okay? She was a captain of the U.S. national team. She didn't have to do that, okay? But what she did was she helped. People need help. I'm standing right there. I can help. She helped. So what happened was she built a lot of credit within her teammates and she would have these situations where in a game she could say like, guys, that's not good enough. We need this. We need that. And people weren't offended because she had also, she had already built up all this credit within her team and people knew that she cared about them and people trusted her and people knew that she trusted them. Okay. Carlos Puyol played for Spain and he also played for Barcelona and he was constantly talking throughout games. As you guys grow and you learn how to become a good leader, I want you to consider constant communication on the field. You may hear coaches say that, all right, when this happens, I want you to tell your team to press or drop or slide or squeeze, okay? Those are really common things, but I, I don't like those kind of things. I want you to have a conversation, okay? I'm going to say, I'm going to look at Erica and I'm going to go, Hey, Eric, and Erica might go, hey, do you need me to come back and defend right now? And I'll go, no, no, I don't need you. Yeah, if they switch it, I need you to come. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, and we're having a constant conversation about the things that we can do to support each other on the field as players, someone can press and someone can cover and those kind of things, okay? Different players, basketball players, baseball players, the players that you can see on there had open meetings within their teams. They need to have a time where all of us can sit down and share ideas and maybe we use some and maybe we don't use some. Other coaches in their training rooms and in their facilities, they had saunas and after a game they would go sit down and in those rooms they would talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. And there was nothing that was off the table you could talk about. Yogi Berra was a famous baseball player for the New York Yankees and he used to hold barbecues just so everyone on his team could come, hang out, sit down, talk about baseball and life and all that kind of stuff and support each other, okay? There are a bunch of studies that have been done. And like I said, don't write down every word. I want you to get the most important thing out of this, okay? And that is that the most effective groups, the best teams, you'll actually see a lot of teams right now are getting away from captains, okay? There's a lot of professional teams that don't have captains because they want everyone and they understand this. They want everyone to be able to speak in their group. They don't want anyone to shy away from the conversation. We're gonna have different speakers and listening types in our groups, okay? But everybody should feel comfortable to share their ideas. I know it's really weird when I give you this because I'm speaking to you guys for 40 straight minutes, okay? But all their points are made very short and sweet. It's easiest for me to communicate with a group if I can make the point, and then we can move on to the next point, okay? Sometimes I need a little background and sometimes I need a story, but the truth is, if I can get to the point, it's very helpful, okay? 
I want you guys, what is a, tell me what that player's thinking right now. See, happy, sad, frustrated, angry, hungry. What do you think? He looks kind of disappointed, doesn't he? Okay. Does anyone else see that? Feel that? Okay. Guys, there have been studies that have been done that say, honestly, what you say doesn't mean as much as your body language does. Okay. What you say barely matters in comparison to how you say it and how you look when you say it. Okay. How many of you get a text from a friend and you read it like, whoa, my gosh, she's so mad at me. Why did she say that? But you could read the text a little bit differently and read it in a nice way. I think that happened with me and Kenzie the other day. I feel like you, I feel like you had a, I sent a text and it was kind of direct. Well, maybe it wasn't you. It might have been. I forget who it was. Okay. But you have to understand how things are said is very, very important. Your relationship with people on the team and how that is perceived when you speak to each other is extremely important. I had people that I played with that I could yell at on the field if I needed to. I had a guy that we ended up being in each other's weddings. I was the best man in his wedding. He was in my wedding. We had the same tattoo and we played here together for three years, okay? And we could say whatever we wanted to on the field. But I can tell you when I was a freshman, there were seniors on the team that scared me. I was really anxious. These were, I was an 18 year old little guy and there was these just guys with mustaches and these big huge guys and I was like, guys are huge and I was nervous to go speak to them at times okay so those guys couldn't speak to me the same way I could speak to other people sometimes you need to put your arm around people sometimes you need to be very forceful remember Carlo Overbeck walking around carrying people's luggage for them and building up credit so that one day on the field when she needed it the most she could look at someone and say that's not good enough I need you to work harder okay we got to determine how we say those kind of things. But at that level, she was able to do that because she had created great relationships with people on her team. Okay. That's Carlos Puyol on the right. You guys have to understand when the mood is right, when you are being positive, you can increase the enthusiasm within the group. If you're negative, it goes the other way. Okay. When you are properly channeling things, even anger. You guys can be very effective if it's properly channeled, okay? When things are positive, you perform better on tasks. You perform better as a team. You play better as a team. There was a study done a long time ago where people said they brought in individuals and everyone there was a volunteer. And the study was to build a business plan for a fake business, right? We have a new business. We're going to build this business plan. And what they didn't tell the people in the room that believed everyone they were volunteers, there was one person put in the room to distract everybody. And sometimes he just acted like he didn't care. And he would lose interest and put his head down and not pay attention. Sometimes he acted rude and he was mean to people and angry with people. And he's like, that's a terrible idea, blah, 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 blah. And they did this over and over and over and over again. Okay? And every time he didn't care, at some point he would show less and less interest, super distracted, and at some point eventually he would actually put his head down on the table and act like he was falling asleep. And over the course of time, people were starting to follow his lead, and they said many times there would be six, seven people that also actually put their head down on the table. Okay? When he was angry and rude, he would go, that's a terrible idea, I don't like this idea. Other people became angry and rude. There were arguments in the room, people disagreed. But one of the neatest parts of the story was, as it went on and on, one time he ran into someone in the group who was super positive. And every time he would say something that was negative or put things down or show disinterest, that player, that person, I always say player, that person would step up and say, hey, you know what, no, I see what you're saying, but I think this is actually a good idea because of this. And he would start to roll with those ideas. And as he did that, the group had more confidence. And this, player, this person that was the actor, I keep saying player, this person that was the actor in the room became very frustrated because all the things he was doing to, to derail everything weren't working. The positive attitude of this individual was so great that it overcame all those things. Guys, sometimes you're gonna show up to practice and you're just in a bad mood. You did poorly on an assignment, Maybe you had a disagreement with your family in the car. You got in a fight with your brother or sister in the car right before you walked out on practice, right? And you show up practice in a bad mood. And that's why I need some of your teammates to build you back up because one day 
they're going to show up to practice in a bad mood and you're going to need to build them up. Okay. So I want you guys to think about the power of those things. Groups that are positive can increase the enthusiasm in a group and perform better on the task. Okay. This is nothing I don't want you to write down. Don't even, don't even waste your time on this because it's the same thing I was just talking about with the last slide, okay? And what I want you to understand, like I said, I don't like step, slide, press, drop. I want to have a conversation while I'm on the field. And notice that last part. The best leaders, the best captains and things like that, they viewed their interactions as this never-ending conversation that was going on and on. And sometimes it was communicating ideas and sometimes it was saying, guys, we have to do better, okay? This idea, does anyone know who the All Blacks are? Who, do you? Did you say no? A little. A little. Who are they? They're do you know much about rugby? Are you going down the right path? Like a bit okay, so you do know who they are. I don't know, like, all of them. Yeah, you don't have to know all of them. I don't know all of them either. But it's a rugby team, right? New Zealand's rugby team? Very, very famous team, and they have this idea that when players leave, they're going to leave their jersey in a better place than it was when they arrived there. And I'm going to get back to how we did that, okay? Anyone know who that is? My Angelo. Do you, did you know that? Good. So um, she had a great saying that I love, and I use this in coaching. I use it in coach education, and I want to use it with you guys. That People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I actually had a player in here the other day, we did a little podcast and did an interview with her. And I asked her, I said, when I coached you when you were 11, what was the activities we did? And she was like, no idea. And I was like, do you remember any of the coaching points? And she was like, eh, no idea. But I coached this player for probably seven or eight years in her life. And she always kept coming back. And we get along really well. And that idea that she was picking up ideas along the way and she was adding them to her game, she forgot the things we said or the things we did. But she never forgot how people made her feel. She loved her team. Her team is a great team. is a great group of players that stayed together, and they all got along really well. Okay? So we might forget the things we say and do, but how we make people feel is really important. That's the All Blacks right there, New Zealand's rugby team. Okay? Uh, there's a great book about them, and in that book, I learned a lot of little points. Okay? One of them being, there's no finger pointing. I don't step out on the field and go, it was your fault we gave up a goal. Sorry, I pointed at you. Was that scary? It was your fault. I would never do that, right? So, and that's how they do. They don't point fingers. It's a team. It's a team effort. It's a team game. And they are taking on everything together, okay? They take losses equally. When they lose, they lost. It wasn't one person's issue, okay? Followers, oh, in general, followers like and enjoy playing for uh, leaders that they can trust. But we need teams to have leaders and followers. If I had a team of 11 people out there trying to direct everything, it probably wouldn't go very well. Remember, we need architects and bricklayers. Remember? OK. Um, some of this stuff, some of the chemistry in the team is built with off. It's very difficult with off-field interactions. It's difficult for you guys as you get older. When you play in a high school team or a college team, you see your teammates every day. You see them in the school halls. You walk around. You pass each other. You see each other at football Friday night games and at school activities. Sometimes you have classes together. But club teams can be tough sometimes because you show up from different places, you show up, you practice, and you leave. It's super important. When you guys go to a tournament, that you guys go, and you don't have to get everyone together, but you should go to lunch with your teammates. You should hang out in the hotel with your teammates. Sometimes you're going to a city and your grandparents live there and you're going to spend some time with them. That's all. Awesome. That's fine. Okay? But take advantage of these opportunities to build within your team those bonds. Okay? This is one of my favorite things they say. Well, this is a quote from the book. While the country is still watching replays of their games and school kids are laying in bed and they're dreaming of being an all black one day, the team, the players, are picking up after themselves. They have this idea that they're going to sweep the sheds, they're going to, the sheds in their locker rooms that they have. They're going to clean them on their own. When they leave, the locker rooms are spotless. They don't have other people do that for them. They do that for themselves. They take care of themselves. Okay? This is one of my favorite things. I told you the Japanese team trained here in 2003 for about a week or so, and I watched the players on their team carrying their equipment. There wasn't an equipment person. The players on the team carried equipment. The players on the team set things down. The players on the team helped clean things up. This is very common. After World Cup matches, you will see photographs of Japanese fans in the stadium with trash bags cleaning up trash. 
Have you ever left a professional? Did you ever leave a crew game and you were cleaning up trash on your way out? You were? Um, well, I, I, left this, I left this game. Yeah. You guys are picking them up. Yeah, but they were plastic, so we went down and <laughs> I like that, though. So, how about this? Everyone know, everyone's heard of Disney, right? Walt Disney founded Disney and Disneyland Parks and Disney World Parks. You would often see Walt Disney, the guy who started Disney, that guy, that much power, walking around his parks picking up trash. Okay? It's super important that people have that discipline. That photograph at the bottom of the page is the photograph of the locker room after the 2018 loss that Japan, Japan's men's team had in the World Cup. They had a heartbreaking loss. They went out on a counterattack that happened. They were taking a corner that could have won the game for them. And instead, they got countered and gave up a goal immediately and ended up losing, and their World Cup was over. Some people's careers ended that day. Their World Cup dream ended that day. Some people will never get back to another World Cup. That was a tough day, okay? And they were so close. That is the locker room. It was in Russia that year. This is in, uh, in, in the language of that area, Russian, says thank you. Okay? And that's what the locker room looked like. Do you imagine how upset it would have been when you walk in there and people were probably upset and threw their jersey on the ground or spilled water in there or left things behind? That's what their locker room looked like when they left. We have a rule in the teams I coach that we leave places cleaner than they were when we got there. So when we leave, it's actually cleaner than it was when we got there. That's the rule within my team. Okay. Don't worry about writing too much of this down. You can write this in kind of your own words. Okay. I assess players, and I took this when I used to work for Barcelona across town, and I liked this idea, and I kind of added to it and tweaked it a little bit. And we ask all my Otterbein players here to do an evaluation. And all these, these are big words, right? But some of these things mean, where do you get your motivation to play? Do you get your motivation from something internal? Do you get your motivation because it's a part of you? I play soccer because I'm a soccer player. Do you get your motivation from outside? Is there someone that's kind of convincing you to play? It's good, it's good for you to exercise. It's good for you to be part of a team, okay? And that's where I want to know. I want to know where people get their motivation. Sometimes that A motivation up there is not being motivated. And that's a little scary to me when I find players that score high in that, okay? But you have to understand when you play and you have teammates, some of your teammates are there because they say, I'm a soccer player, this is me. Some are there because they go, I know that playing soccer is good for me. I can be part of a team, I exercise, I work out, this is really important. You have people on your team that might not want to be there that day. Okay, especially at young ages, sometimes people are saying, I don't know if this is the right thing for me, and they show up to practice with that in their mind. So if you say, this is me, through and through, I'm a soccer player. At practice, I can say, hey, let's work a little bit harder because I think we can get better. But that one player that's wondering whether or not they really do enjoy it and should be there, I probably can't get on them like that. I probably have to go like, hey, that was great. Let's see if we can keep improving on that. And I have to speak to them a little bit differently. Okay? So understand that different people have different motivations. These are just a few more tests and the results I get from the players that I talk to in this level, okay? No, old Ted Lasso, if anybody, if your parents are watching that show or anyone's seen it, but um, what's that? You do, you watch it? Your parents do? Yeah. It's probably best. Probably. You, you watched it? My parents only watch an episode. You watched an episode or two, yeah. We probably got to be a little selective on which ones we watch, but yeah. Okay, so... But you have to understand, we all have different styles of speaking. Tell, raise your hand if you have people on your team that are a little soft-spoken and people that are loud. It's everybody, right? Okay. We have people that don't say anything at all, right? And people that never stop talking, probably. Okay. So how about this? There are different ways of listening and between listening and hearing. Okay. I can listen to you, but am I really hearing what you're saying, right? You might be saying things, right? But I don't, I'm not really actually kind of listening to what those things mean. That's really important, okay? Um, who you're communicating with is very important. What does the situation call for? Let's say you're in a game and you feel like one of your teams could be working a little bit harder and your team's winning eight to nothing. Is that a time for me to go, come on, Erica, right? But what if we're in a state semifinal and we're winning one nothing and there's five minutes to go? And I gotta like get that extra energy out of someone and say, come on, let's go, right? I could probably do that when we need it in that moment, right? I have to be aware of what the situation calls for, okay? You have to be able 
to allow your teammates to get things wrong. How many of you are better at dribbling a soccer ball than you were two years ago? How many of you are better at dribbling, shooting? How about shooting? How about passing? How about your first touch? Anyone's first touch improved? Okay, all right, good, you can put your hands down. You're trying to get a first touch, is that what you said? I didn't even know how to get a first touch until I was like... So now you're learning how to receive it. Good. So how about this? Communication is the same way. Do you ever get shooting wrong? Do you ever have a bad pass? Right? Do you ever dribble the ball and lose it? Yes. Happens, okay? So we have to understand that we're going to get it wrong sometimes. You have to allow yourself to get it wrong sometimes. Oh, I knew that rubber band was going to break sooner or later. Okay? You have to allow yourself to get it wrong sometimes because you're learning. Okay? You have to allow your teammates to get it wrong sometimes. Sometimes you might have a teammate that is speaking to you and they're angry and they're frustrated, okay? You gotta understand they're learning how to do it too. Sometimes someone's gonna get out of their car and their parents gonna say as they go, like, hey, I want you to be a really good leader today. I want you to speak to your team. I want you to communicate. And I go, I don't know if I'm ready to do that today. And your parent says, I really want you to work on that today. Well, when I go do it, I'm doing it because I'm trying to have the confidence to try it, but I also might get it wrong. Okay? So you have to give some leeway to players on your team that might just be having a bad day. Have you guys ever felt sorry or sad about the way you spoke to somebody after you did it? You immediately said something, you're like, oh man, that came out wrong. Or like, oh, I know I was angry at my brother, so I yelled at my teammate instead, right? <laughs> I said angry at my brother and some hands went up. So, but that's the thing is, right? Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes we're going to get it wrong. Sometimes we're going to get it right. Okay, sometimes people hear things differently. So, these are 45 minute sessions, is that what they plan on? And you start at 10, 15? Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna leave this to some questions for you guys. And if we don't have any questions, I might ask you one more thing to do, okay? Who has questions about what we just worked on? Anyone? Is that a hand up? Yeah, you got both hands up, but you covered your mouth. All right, what's your question? <laughs> the whole point? So, and I want you to think about that. The dog lineups that we did should show you that we have different characteristics and different styles, right? We chose some dogs for physical attributes because they're big and strong, right? Some of you guys said that this dog, and I've heard people talk about this, these dogs are very obedient, these dogs are very disciplined, these dogs are very patient. Do you guys agree that sometimes we need a very patient dog out on the field, and sometimes I need a dog that's gonna go crazy and run all over the place? So they need the same thing in players, right? Do we need some of those dogs in the lineup that are very loud? And I'll get to you here in a second, okay? That we can hear them and you hear them communicating, but we also need some dogs that are just going to be kind of quiet and listen and take it in. So we need the same thing, okay? So the point of that is to recognize all the differences, but also recognize the differences in how a coach might choose a lineup. The lineups can be drastically different from what you might think or what you would want even in your own team. How many of you think you would choose a different starting lineup on any given day than your coach has chosen? You're allowed to say that, okay? My coaches at Otterbein, when I choose a starting lineup, we'd very rarely agree on every single player, okay? Chad is one of our coaches in here, and when he coached with me, he and I used to disagree on a couple of players all the time. It was nice because I was the head coach, and I always won the disagreement, and I got to choose who I wanted, but we didn't always agree, okay? Chad Simpkins. Not Chad Smith. Not Chad Schuler. okay? It's chatter cheese, exactly. Okay. So, but other questions? You had your hand up. Okay. Well, I never said you couldn't. So this is a really good question. You said, why did you put Clifford in goal even though he's a giant cartoon and everyone else used real dogs? Here's what I want you to think about. I want you to understand this. Did I ever tell you you couldn't put cartoon dogs in there? I just said dogs, right? Hey. Guys, have you ever been in training and you have an activity and you're going to goal and the activity was about a certain part of the field and then you get to an area or maybe you shoot and the ball hits the post and it comes back to you and it feels like that segment of that activity is over and you look at your coach and you go, am I allowed to shoot this? Have you ever said, am I allowed to dribble here? Am I allowed to pass here? Am I allowed to shoot? Have you ever said that or thought that? You ever been confused in an activity and you're like, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this? Okay, listen, don't ever limit yourself. Every single activity a coach does in training should have an entire book of rules. 
If soccer has a rule book that's that thick, every activity I run, oh, oh, do we have kick-ins instead of throw-ins? Are we taking corner kicks? Are we going to take goal kicks? What happens if someone handles the ball in this activity? I've seen activities where you are handling the ball. Okay? So it should have a whole set of rules. So I can't do that. If every activity I ever ran with you, I gave you all the rules, you would forget some of them. They would run together. Guys, we don't even know all the rules of soccer, right? I guarantee I could stump you guys on some rules right now. And I don't know all of them. Okay? So the thing is, is when you limit yourself in training, what I would do. So I don't know if I'm allowed to shoot. The ball hit the post, it came back to me. What should I do? I ask a question about whether or not I can shoot or shoot. shoot. Finish. I'm going to put that in the back of the net and then I'll go, hey, coach, was I allowed to do that? Don't lose the opportunity. Don't ever limit yourself. Okay? If you're playing a game and I have you be a neutral player and I start you on a certain line and you're not sure whether or not you can come off that line a little bit to play, come off the line a little bit. Don't ever limit yourself. And then as a coach, I'll go, hey, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to stay on that line for me. Okay? And then when you stay on that line, then we sort it out. Sometimes I'm going to have to tweak the rules because I can't give you all the rules all the time. Okay? So that's a long way to answer why I put a cartoon dog in my dog lineup but I really, really want you guys to never limit yourselves and let a coach decide, I'm gonna not allow you to do that in training, but your first thought should be, I'm gonna do what benefits me on the field and benefits my team, okay?